Today I'll be very quickly talking about brain comey solution signatures in progressive supranuclear palsy, or PSP. Um, and this is some work I carried out as a three-month rotation project in the first year of my PhD. So PSP is a multifactorial late onset fatal neurodegenerative disease. Um, it's a complex disease and environmental, genetic and epigenetic factors have all been implicated in disease pathology. Um, neuropathology of the disease is defined by intracellular aggregation of the microtubule associated protein tau in neurofibrillary tangles and tufted astrocytes. DNA methylation is one of the most studied epigenetic modifications and very um, simply involves the addition of a methyl group to DNA, which leads to changes in expressions of target genes. Um, and aberrant DNA methylation is implicated in a large number of diseases, including neurodegenerative diseases. So in 2018, a group led by Weber investigated aberrant DNA methylation in PSP, um, and they found significant differences in DNA methylation levels between patients and controls. Um, and specifically, um, the group reported significant hypermethylation of the gene DLX1 across multiple sites. Um, and they carried out function analysis of this gene and its antisense, antisense transcript. Um, and they suggest that altered DLX1 methylation contributes to PSP pathogenesis by influencing MAPT. Um, so we investigated their data set further using a systems biology approach, and we carried out weighted gene correlation network analysis to identify modules of co-methylated genes that were associated with PSP. So a brief overview of our methodology is shown here. So firstly, we loaded the raw methylation data, which had been obtained by uh, Weber et al. from post-mortem forebrain tissue. And we carried out various quality control assessments, after which we included 164 samples, 93 PSP patients and 71 controls in our downstream analysis. So after some data normalization, we adjusted for confounders such as non-neuronal cell proportion, sex and age. And we carried out our own differential methylation analysis using a slightly different pipeline. Um, and we then carried out network analysis using the Hyant's various probes we'd found by utilizing WGCNA, which is an R package for weighted correlation network analysis. So from the differential methylation analysis that we did, we also found that probes mapping to the gene DLX1 are significantly hypermethylated in PSP compared to controls. But um, what I'm showing you here are some results from our network analysis. So we found 13 clusters of highly correlated CPGs, i.e. co-methylation modules, and we assessed the relationship of the modules we found with various traits, including disease status. Um, and these associations are shown here in this first plot, where modules are shown as rows and traits as columns. So we found that the red module here is significantly associated with disease status, which is shown here as sample group. Um, and this module is found to be positively correlated with sample group, which indicates that higher methylation levels of probes that compose this module are associated with the presence of PSP. So we also looked at correlation between module membership in the red module and gene significance. Um, module membership is effectively a measure of how much a gene belongs to a module, and gene significance is the correlation between CPG-specific methylation levels and disease status. Um, so for this red module, correlation between module membership and gene significance was quite high. Um, and this means that gene with high module membership in this red module are potentially relevant for PSP. Um, finally, we carried out a functional enrichment analysis of genes mapping to probes with higher module membership in this red module. Um, and we found enrichment of gene ontology terms such as extracellular matrix organization and actin cytoskeleton organization as well as relevant processes for the brain, such as neurogenesis and neuron differentiation, which further supports a role for DNA methylation alterations in PSP. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Any questions at all? I'm going to look in the question box here, because sometimes I'm missing. Yeah, I think they have to do with, with Henry's. So, I know it's only a few month project, and that's great. A man, amazing amount of work for for a short period. So well done with that. Where, if you were doing it next, where would where would you go next with these with this screen, if you like, of methylation? How would you pursue it next? Do you think what's the next important step? Um, well, I think I think there's a couple of things. I mean, obviously, we've identified these modules. So looking a bit more de in depth about what's exactly going on in each module, we had a bit of a, uh, an issue with post mortem delay um, giving quite an effect in some of the modules. So we couldn't really sort of take them 
yeah, we had to be a bit skeptical about those modules. So I think sort of trying to, to sort that out a bit first would be interesting. And then I think, I mean, this was just um, post-mortem full brain tissue. I think just generally expanding to different different regions and specific cell types as well, I think would be quite interesting. DLX1, um, I think actually isn't highly expressed in a huge number of cells, which was the interesting finding from the other paper. So I think it would be, yeah, as I say, interesting to, to, to look at different cells and see if you could see differences. Um, yeah. Okay, thank you very much indeed.